Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Vault Fox, and today I'm going to show you how I 3D printed and finished up my Captain Rex helmet. I got my helmet file from Galactic Armory, and I will link it down below in the description. He has really reliable prints, and I always tend to go with him for any of my clone builds. Once I had the file, I went into a program called Mesh Mixer, which is a file program that I use to open up my STL files and split them up for easier printing. I then go down to the Edit tool and select Plain Cut, and here I'm going to be cutting off the top of the helmet. I like to place my cut a little bit above that recess on the helmet just to make my life a little bit easier whenever I'm bonding this and gluing the helmet back together. Once I'm happy with the placement, I'll go back over to plain cut and make sure the cut type is slice, heat both, and I will hit apply. Next, we're going to go under edit and separate shells. And as you can tell, there are now two separate pieces of the helmet. You could stop here with two pieces. However, I find a lot of success in printing out clone helmets by splitting them into three parts. So to do that, I'm just going to go back under edit and plain cut. And this time I'm going to angle the cut so that it's perpendicular to the dome. And I'm going to slide the cut back to where it's behind the ear caps. You can experiment with your plain cuts in this fashion. However, I found that putting it behind the ear cap, again, makes it a lot easier for me whenever I'm lining things up and gluing them back together after the print is finished. Once you're happy with the placement of all of these cuts, you're just going to want to go and export all three of these pieces as their own individual parts. And after a week of printing on my Creality CR10, everything is finished. Right here is the dome piece. Everything looks pretty good, even if it's a little out of focus. The back piece also came out great as well. And I actually printed this on the top lip so that it didn't have as much support needed. And oh boy, it wouldn't be a project on Vault Fox's channel if it wasn't for a 3D printing failure. Towards the very end of the print, the front chin part actually misaligned and I ended up having to actually hacksaw it off in a TikTok that I'll show up here. And yeah, it can be fixed, but that doesn't mean that I wish I would just get a print to completely finish without me having to do some kind of bodywork to it. And here's a plate of delicious gribblies that'll go on Rex later. Nom 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 nom. So before I can even start bonding up this helmet, I have to fix this chin part on the front. And the first thing I want to do is make sure that this actual exposed mesh infill part is as smooth as I possibly can for whenever I get the chin part back on. Before I get out my palm sander, I'm just taking the chin part that misaligned and putting it on the front of the helmet just to see how much bondo and how much work I'm going to need to do. And it's actually not that bad. It's going to require a little bit of sculpting, but I'll get through it. My first step is to take out my palm sander with 120 grit sandpaper and just sand down that exposed infill part. Be careful during this step because essentially when you're sanding 3D print, you're going to be just melting the plastic. I'm then just kind of situating the chin, seeing how well it's sitting. And then I also take my palm sander to that as well, just to get that as flush as I possibly can. Next, I'm taking a pair of plastic clippers and just clipping little bits of the plastic off at the ends that sit around the aerators on Rex's helmet. As you can see here, the chin part is sitting as flush as I possibly can get it to go without me adding in some kind of heat force or just forcing it into place. So next up is some super glue. Once the chin piece is super glued into place, I'm going back in and doing a little bit more carving with my plastic clippers. Sorry that it's like not even in the camera focus. After all of that, it's time to bust out a tube of Bondo and we're gonna need a lot of layers of this stuff. With my gloves on and out in a nice ventilated area, I'm just taking the Bondo and slathering it all over that chin. It's gonna look like crap until it doesn't. And I think it took me about mm, six or seven layers of this stuff just on the chin to get it where I wanted to. But hey, it was better than having to reprint it. I mean, I didn't wanna sit through another like four day print of that front piece. Once I've got a nice thick layer on the chin, I turn my attention to the rest of the helmet. 
I had a nice big gap along the dome because your girl can't cut off support properly. So I'm making sure to cover that seam nice and liberally. And then I'm basically just going over the entire helmet to get rid of all of those layer lines. Eventually you'll get to this forbidden red velvet cake looking thing. And that means you're ready to go sanding again. After I let that first layer of Bondo cure for about four hours, I went over to my igloo cooler where I like to sit whenever I sand apparently, and sat outside and just went to town on it. I typically use 120 to 150 grit here. Just make sure you're not going too low, like in the 80s and 40s, or else you're just gonna be ripping through that Bondo and not really smoothing it over. The first sanding of your helmet is gonna take a while, so make sure you've got a podcast or a audiobook on, and just kind of get comfy and kind of zone out and sand. I've actually grown to love sanding. Uh, maybe love is too strong of a word, but I don't mind it as much as I did in the past. Make sure you're outside because this Bondo dust is gonna get everywhere and make sure you're wearing some type of a mask. And also if you can get some gloves because this stuff, again, you don't really want to get it on you. It's kind of gross and it really does take forever to get off as you can tell on my pants and my shirt. And this is what my helmet looked like after one round of sanding. You can tell there's still a lot of work that needs to be done, but that's okay. More layers of Bondo is going to solve this. It's just gonna take some time. Before I went in with my next round of Bondo, I decided to do a little bit more sanding work with my Dremel. If you're going to do this, again, just be careful as you were with the palm sander because whenever you're using a rotary tool like this or a sander, it's really going to eat away and basically melt the plastic. You can kind of see here that even I got a little bit heavy handed with my Dremel, tend to do that. So just be mindful when you're using the Dremel and try not to push too much into the actual 3D print itself and kind of glide over it instead. And now that all that sanding is done, it's time to dust off all of that Bondo dust that we've accumulated, all of that 3D printer filament plastic that we've accumulated, and get it ready for some filler primer. Personally, I like to spray on some filler primer at this step so that I can see where the glaring issues are and where I need to slap on some more Bondo. And to be honest, it's pretty much everywhere. Once I let that filler primer set for about four hours, I go back in with my Bondo again. And I apologize, the footage that you're about to see here is actually me finishing a clone helmet. It's the same kind of process as I was going through for Captain Rex. I just apparently did not film the very end of Captain Rex, but I still wanted to show you how I fixed it up. And here's what your second layer of Bondo is typically gonna look like. I let that layer of Bondo cure for about three to four hours and it's back at it again with some sanding. This time whenever I've got the filler primer on and my second layer of Bondo, I like to just use 220 grit so that I'm not digging too much into the Bondo and the filler primer. At this stage, I'm trying to smooth everything over. I also do a little bit of hand sanding in those recesses. They're really hard to get with my palm sander. And here's some photos to give you a better idea of where I was after about six to seven layers of Bondo with a layer of filler primer in between each one. Definitely took a lot of elbow grease, but as you can tell, I pretty much got it to where it looked like there wasn't any kind of a failure at all. So, woohoo! <laughs> The next step in getting this ready was to do a final pass of some 220 grit sandpaper, do a little bit of hand sanding and make sure everything was nice and smooth. And before I come in with my base coat of white, I like to take a chip brush and just brush away all that dust that I just kicked up by sanding. You don't want to get that stuck in your base coat. And finally, I'm going in with some Rust-Oleum white and just spraying the entire helmet with a nice white base coat. A 
few hours, your base coat will be dry and it'll be ready to go on to the next step and that's painting up your clone helmet. If you'd like to see how I painted my Captain Rex helmet, you can just click on the video right here. And I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching all. Bye.